important appearances are when it comes to social media. So welcome to those of you who are tuning in live. And for those of you who are watching the replay here on uh, Instagram, make sure you double tap or sorry, single tap, I always say double tap, single tap to advance in intervals of um, two to three minutes because this will be a long video. So if you're watching on the replay, you can advance through if you don't want to listen to all the ramblings at the beginning. If you're catching this on a replay elsewhere, if I choose to save it and upload it, um, then you can always advance two or three, maybe four minutes into the video uh, to get to all the meaty good stuff because in the beginning we chat and say hi to all the amazing people. Um, we have got Danny, my girl Danny, Head in the Clouds Boutique is here, Tanya at The Real TPS Fit, Corey, my co-author on The Dummies Book, which you guys know about. We're writing The Dummies Book. She's in the house. Uh, Social Media Todd is here, Verified Beth. Uh, we got a bunch of other people popping in, said, uh, Danny's saying my house is so quiet, I don't know what to do with myself. Normally, Danny is in her car in the middle of cheerleading practice, um, of, for her daughter, so she's got the night off tonight from cheerleading practice, so she's actually getting to hang out and watch the entire video, so she's, she's like, my house is so quiet. Um, everyone's saying hi, Tanya, my girl, good to see you. I wasn't sure you were going to show up, usually you let me know, but I'm glad to see you're here. Okay, so uh, I am going to go ahead and drop it in here, uh, what we are talking about, um, how, see, I always do this, I'm like, it's, you guys know how long my nails are, and it's impossible to type when my phone is at this angle, how, oh, how important, this is really hard for you guys, this is why I tell people to advance through the video, because it's ridiculous trying to watch me do this, how important, and you guys can probably hear all the clicking, which is even probably worse. How important are appearances on social media? Question mark post. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pin that one. So everyone knows what we're talking about tonight. Um, all right. So a few more people have showed up. Uh, Janice is in the house. Hey, girl. Uh, it's Matt uh, is in the house. Hey, good to see you as well. So glad you guys are here. I love that you guys all show up right at 4.30. Well, it's 4.30 my time, 7.30 Eastern, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. I love that you guys are here promptly. I love that you guys show up um, when we do these uh, live videos. You guys make it so much fun. So tonight we are talking about how important... Uh, Donna's in the house. Hey, Donna, good to see you too. Um, we're talking about how important appearances are on social media. This is, can be a bit of a touchy subject for some people. Uh, as a reminder, I had a blog post that went out today, which specifically said how important or how pretty does your Instagram really need to be? Um, and it's talking about, you know, and, and you guys know this, if you've read the blog post, you know it. Um, absolutely, you have to have a pretty Instagram, you have to have a beautiful Instagram, well curated content and all that. And I do talk about that in today's blog post. Um, but I wanted to use tonight's live to kind of take that a little bit further. Um, for those of you who haven't read the, the blog post, spoiler alert, um, it's basically talking about how so many people are starting to have all the same style on their Instagram. People are out there teaching how to create beautiful Instagram feeds, and they all look the same. And yes, they're beautiful. And they're these beautiful, light, airy, you know, pastels and whites and beautiful flowery photos and everything's overly staged and perfect. And they're amazing. But now everybody looks like it. And it was I was actually chatting with one of my friends, Julianne. And she was like, it's like they've become like Stepford Wife Instagram accounts. And I, I was dying laughing because I'm like, you're so right. And so that's what the blog post was about. It was about the fact that these Instagram accounts, yeah, um, Danny at Head in the Clouds Boutique is saying it's not real life. Um, they, they're they fake. They're overly done. And, and they lose all that personality. Um, so yeah, you have a beautiful feed, but what is it doing for you for your business? Sure, you might get some more likes. You might get some more engagement and everyone telling you how beautiful your photos are. But if those photos aren't converting, what what's the value? Why do you even care? So that was the whole purpose of today's blog post. And I kind of, like I said, wanted to pull on that. Um, Ken's in the house, about time you showed up. Just kidding, giving you a hard time. Um, it was it, it was taking that blog post and, and talking a little bit in that context, because it was, that was, it was like a mini rant for me. It wasn't a huge rant, but it was a bit of a rant about a topic that, and a lot of people were like, thank you for finally addressing this. Like we're noticing the same thing and we're kind of tired of it. 
Um, so that was what I, I wrote the blog post and I was like, well, hey, I'm going to go on Instagram live. Let's tie it all together. So I really do want to talk about appearances on social media. I want you guys to be active. Please chime in the comments, ask questions, give examples. Um, Danny head in the class boutique is saying, please rant. You guys love it when I rant. I love when I rant. I have like the best videos when I rant. It's like, it's so much fun. You guys get all up in it. I love it when we get a good rant going. Um, but I do want to kind of talk about, you know, what those appearances are, what, you know, what you're saying with those first impressions, how they're impacting um, your audience and how they're potentially impacting your business positively or negatively. Um, and so that's, that's the key thing um, that we're going to talk about. That's, that's what we're going to go into. If, if we start ranting and, and we start going down that road, we'll, we'll let it fly. Um, otherwise we'll, we'll try to keep it informational and educational, but, but we all know how these videos go. Um, and for those of you that are tuning in at whatever point, um, like I said, feel, feel free to, to drop comments and questions. Uh, I have no idea how long this video will last. It'll probably be about an hour. Uh, Watson KS, Ken is in the house and he runs, uh, Chatgram, which is the, the Twitter chat dedicated to Instagram topics. And they were talking about live video this week at, on Chatgram. And I was laughing because he literally, they were talking about the ideal length and uh, of an Instagram live. And they were saying how my Instagram lives usually last an hour, but I do them webinar style like this, right? Like we kind of ramble and do some conversation, um, but that I use this hour uh, to really give as much value as possible. And it was really funny because I, I, it made me laugh. And I was like, you know what? It's so true. And I probably need to actually address this. But he was like, the best part of Jen's videos are the last two minutes. So if you can't watch the whole thing, come back and watch the replay and watch the last two minutes. It's comical because I get to my hour. Um, seeking surnames is in the house. Hey, girl, good to see you. And Tanya, I know you left a comment. I'm going to go back and, and get it as things pop in. Um, but I, what happens is at the end of these videos, I get to that last, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, we only have like four minutes left and you can't go over an hour. Instagram will literally just shut off your camera. Like you're done. And you only get like a, I think it's like a 15 second warning. So at the 15 second mark, it starts like this timer shows up at the top of the screen and it's like 15, 14, 13. And I'm like, I mean, you think I talk fast. You get me on the last two minutes of one of these hour videos and I am like rattling like I, you know, so fast. It's crazy because I'm like, I want to say goodbye. I want to thank you guys. I want to remind you to go check out the blog. I'm like, blah, 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 and I go crazy. So per Ken's request, I will, I will, try, I will try to make the last two minutes of the video as good as always. Um, but it was, I really loved that they were chatting about that and, and the ideal length for videos. So that was, that was a fun topic. Um, okay. So a couple questions popped in, uh, real TBS fit. My girl, Dan, uh, Tanya had said, um, I totally agree with how Stepford wives, everyone looks, but it's what seems to be popular. So how do you break through if you don't follow that style, which I don't, and you don't girl and don't do it. Do not give in because it is not you. Um, and that's what I talked about in the blog post today. You guys, I might, I'm not saying my Instagram is beautiful. I'm not saying my Instagram is what everyone should do. I actually use mine for a lot of testing and I use mine for different purposes than a lot of businesses do because I'm using it as an Instagram teaching tool. I'm not saying mine's gorgeous and, and I'm not saying it's perfect, but the thing is, and this is what I want to talk about a lot tonight is, is how the appearance of what you create online aligns with your brand. That is what is important. If your content aligns, meaning if someone looks at your gallery on Instagram, or if they look at your content on Facebook, or if they look at your pin boards on Pinterest or whatever it is, and they can turn around and go, I have a really good idea of who that person is. When they pick up the phone and talk to you, when they meet you in real life, then by all means, that personality that they have in their mind should match who you are in real life. Now, if you look at my photos on my Instagram account, they're bold, they're bright colors, there's a lot more in my faces. Now I don't like it, but it works. It's better for engagement and it's branding and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of photos with my face on it. Um, but they're, they're photos of me and they're my facial expressions. And the, the colors are, are not the whitewashed Stepford Wives at all. A, because that's just not my style of photography. I think it's beautiful, but I can't even create those photos if I wanted to. 
but it doesn't align with my brand. You guys are watching me here live. I am not that soft, pussy-footing, flowery girl. Trust me, I like my flowers, I like my sparkles, I like my bedazzles, but I like them big, bold, and beautiful, honey. I am not that whitewashed, calm, pretty girl. That's not me. Look at me. I'm, I'm a, I can be abrasive. You guys get me on these rants and I'm cussing up a storm on my live videos. That's, I'm not that whitewashed pastel imagery. And that's why if you look at my gallery, subliminally, the content you see there is very aligned with my branding. So Tanya, I want you to make sure that you stay true to you. You are this fun, spunky, colored hair, laughable, outgoing, just hilariously dorky, fun, wonderful woman. And I can say this because I know you love me. Um, and I want that to come through in your content, which it does. You are great with your captions. You guys, if you go check out The Real TPS Fit, she has great captions. Super great story type content captions and emojis and all this. That is your style and it rings so true to who you are. So that's part of the appearance. It's not just the photo. It's how you are portraying yourself in this entire context. So we'll talk more about this throughout the night um, and, and why really, in all honesty, not doing what everyone else is doing is how you're going to break through, sweetie. It's not being what everyone else does. I don't care how pretty it is. You just become the noise. You're just another account. You're never going to stand out, even if that's what everybody else is telling you to do. So don't give in. Okay, that mini rant is over. So um, Mac and Bozo said, answer later if it's not relevant, but I hate to blog. Hate. All in capital letters, hate. Can an Instagram or YouTube account sustain itself without a website or is that just crazy talk? Okay, so this is a little off topic, but I do want to answer it. So let's just dive into it. And I know there's a bunch more comments that have popped in down below, so I'm going to catch up, you guys. Um, but this is for uh, Mac and Boso. So you can. I, I know plenty of people who actually use Instagram as a microblog and they use it to share their stories and that sort of content. Um, and I know people who use YouTube, you know, to create a video channel and they tell their stories and they provide, you know, content and education and tutorials and all this stuff without having a website. You can do it. Of course, I don't want you to. There's so much value in having a website because that's where the SEO comes from. That's where the the, the central part of everything needs to tie back to. You need to have a purpose. So if you're using Instagram and you're using YouTube, why are you using it? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to drive sales? Are you trying to build a brand? Whatever that is you're trying to do, you need a place to send people. If they're gonna call you and, and, make, and register you know, for your course or they're gonna book a consultation or they're gonna buy your product, they need a place to do it. And the place to do that is from your website. Now, that being said, your website doesn't have to be a blog. My website is a blog because I love to blog. But your website can just be a website. You don't need a blog. If you're doing videos, if you're using YouTube, then take those YouTube videos and embed them in your, blo in your blog, in your website, and that becomes your blog content. Nothing says you have to write. If you hate it, don't do it, because it's going to come through that you hate it, and that is... See? See, I tied it back! I'm, I'm making it work in my own mind, you guys. That does come back to impressions and appearances, because if you create content because you're forced to create it and you don't like it and you don't love it and you hate it, it comes through. You're not passionate about it. And that's You guys know me and love me because I do these passionate rants because I give a shit. I'm telling you, the rants are coming out tonight. It's going to happen. I wasn't planning on it. Um, but you guys, this is what I'm passionate about. I love doing these things. I love talking about this stuff. So it's easy for me. It's not work. If someone turned around and said, I had to create five videos every week that was all educational content on, you know, another topic that I had absolutely no interest in, I would hate it. Hate with capital letters, just like you posted. So don't force yourself into something that you don't love. If you like doing videos, create videos, but please create some sort of a website, some sort of a central repository where you can feed people, where you can do your lead generation, where you can have an email list forming. All these other components can go into it. You need that central location, but it doesn't have to be a blog. Okay, so I hope that answered that question. Okay, um, so I already said hey. Uh, so Ratliff said hey Jen, hope things are good. Things are amazing, good to see you. We haven't chatted in a while, but so good to see you in the house. Um, I'm getting laughs and smiley faces and LOLs. Um, need the Emmy playoff music, no, no. That's the great thing about doing my own, Ken. I ain't got no music until the 15 second pops up and then I'm 
<laughs> oh, I that's what you're talking about. I'm so far behind in the comments. This is the thing. I'm like, I'm realizing. I'm like, oh, I was probably talking about that when you posted that comment. This is how far behind I am in the comments, you guys. This is what happens when we rant. I can't keep up with everything. That would be funny though. That would be actually really funny if like when the timer came up and it was like 15 seconds, if it started playing music and then it like just got so loud and it drowned you out and then you just lost your video. I think we should talk to Instagram. I'm going to get on that, you know, that imaginary bat phone that I have and just, yeah, they need to play music. Let's do it. Okay. Um, Tiny said, no worries. It's just not my style. I know it, girl. Um, so Danny said, then why are people giving me shit? Um... Well, yeah, I know, honey, and we'll talk more. Um, James is in the house uh, from Singapore. He's going to come back from the replay. Um, everyone's laughing at me. It's giving me anxiety. That's me. Yes, I totes love you. I love you, girl. Hey, dorks unite. I got all the thumbs up. Um, I love that you guys are, like, chatting. You guys always do this, too. You guys always chat within the comments, and it's awesome. So I'm going to get back to topic. I just want to make sure we get all the uh, the questions answered. Um, can, uh, Head in the Clouds Boutique said, can you just have an Etsy address? Yes. Etsy, in a lot of ways, does substitute as a website, you guys. It does actually, because it gives you a repository. That's where you can post all your content. That's where you can post all of your, your product and that sort of thing um, that, you're, that you're selling. And it, it creates a direct link for people to buy from you. So absolutely, if you need that to start as a, as a website, use that by all means. It's a great place to get started. Um, okay, we are all caught up. And my girl Evie just joined too. Hey, sweetheart. Um, you guys are amazing. I love how many of you show up. I love that you're all here. I love that you guys are all um, excited and, and participating in all of this. So um, we're going to chat more. If we have more questions, please drop them in the comments and we'll, we'll get to those questions and everything. And hopefully I can keep up a little bit better and not lose track of what you guys are talking about. Girl, I missed you. You need to get down here to San Diego. You need to like catch up on a girl's night. All right. So when it comes to appearances on social media, because that's what we're talking about tonight, we've already kind of talked about it a little bit, kind of led into it. Absolutely, appearances are important. We kind of already talked about, you know, I talked about the blog post today and in response to Tanya, um, I was talking about how, you know, what people see from your content should align with your brand. So you, here's my biggest thing, you guys. I don't care where it is or what, you know, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, as it, whether it's anything, you only have one chance to make a first impression. And a lot of the times you have your audience. They know who you are. They've been following you. They know you. That's great. Those are the people we want to focus on and build content for. That's great. But we still want to grow our audience. We want more people to find us. We want more potential leads. We want more potential sales. And to do this, you have to rely on a really quality first impression. You guys know how much I preach this when it comes to Instagram, but it comes to all of your content. It comes to how you come across on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, on LinkedIn, on Snapchat, whatever it is you're doing, you only get one opportunity for a first impression. And if someone comes and looks at whatever social media profile it is, or even if they go to all of them, then they need to have a great idea of who you are. They need to turn around and be like, this person's pretty effing cool and I want to like follow them. I want to get to know more about them. Whether it's videos, photos, links, whether it's anything that you're posting, you want to make sure that you're giving the best possible first impression. So you want it to be your brand voice and your messaging and your styling and your your imagery and your your fonts and your colors and all of these tie in to that first impression. You want that cohesiveness. You want, I guess cohesiveness isn't really a word, cohesion. Um, you want all of that. <laughs> I love, you guys, I have to like detract because you guys are like going off in the comments and I love you. Um, so Evie's just saying you're going to come visit before, but you better come visit before February. How awesome would that be? Um, and, um, and then Evie curses, I'm not following her. <laughs> I know. I do worry because I go on these rants and then I like, go and repost these these videos, whether they're on YouTube and things. And I'm like, I feel like I need like an, an expletive warning on some of the videos. I try not to because I know I'm going to like, that thing on live, I just tend to let it go. I'm like, ah, I'm just going like, you know, I'm like, here's my list of things to talk about, but I don't have a real script and I'm just going and we get going and we start these rants, these conversations and I just, me, it comes out. And then if I do repost these videos to YouTube, I'm like, oh God, <laughs> But I figure enough people curse and I'm not ashamed of it, you guys. It doesn't bother me at all. I love it. Um, but I know that there are people that it offends. Um, but then that being said, you know, my whole thing is I'm like, well, if they don't like that I cuss like three times in an hour video and that's too much for them, then I'm probably not the right person for them to work with. Because I'm just saying, 
three in an hour? Whew, that's me being good, honey. Okay, so, um, Head in the Clouds Boutique said, if it puts the real me, or if I put the real me, it'll ruin my page aesthetic, lol. See, and I disagree, sweetheart, I do. Um, Danny, I think when, and we've been going back and forth on, on the side, Danny, I've been talking about her bio and how to write her bio. I think that's amazing. I think that's part of who you are. I think the fact that you're a tattooed dork is the best description of somebody, and you're going to attract the right audience. You're going to attract people who either don't care that you're a tattooed dork or who love that you're a tattooed dork. People that are going to love that you rescue dogs and pit bulls are going to either love you or they're not. And if they're not, too bad, so sad. And I know it's hard when you're a product-based business and you kind of want to serve everybody, but this comes back to the whole topic, you guys, of appearances. You cannot, you cannot please everybody. It is literally impossible. You cannot do it. It cannot be done. Don't try. You want to just focus on that key audience. And here's the great thing. When you focus on this audience and you give them that 100% brand, voice, style, attention, and personality, then it expands. Because then someone else, you've got, you've got a, the solid, amazing niche of people who love you and respect you. They start telling their friends. And even if you're not 100% what their friends are looking for, they're like, well, hey, my friend likes it. And I, I can get past the occasional customer. I can get past the, you know, the crazy hair. I can get past the funky clothes or whatever it is. Because they're going to find value in what you're doing. And they're going to want your products or all these sorts of things. But if you try to please everybody, you're going to push everybody away. And you're going to end up attracting all the wrong clients and customers. It's hard because it's forcing you to start really small. And businesses don't want to start small. We want to start big. We want to start making money. We want to start just getting clients or customers to pay us, whether it's buying products or services. But don't. It's, it's honestly, from personal experience, from all the clients I've worked with, I can promise you, the, mo the minute you niche it down and the minute you make it your personality 100%, I promise you, you will see better results. And if you don't, you can take me out back and smack me. I'm serious. It's, it, I promise you, putting the real you in there does not ruin your page aesthetic. It gives your page real aesthetic. Um, and Ask Evie said, oh, I just dropped the BS bomb in a Facebook Live. Girl! And that was the thing. When Evie and I got together, man, she is my sister from another Mista, you guys. We were we were killing ourselves laughing. We were, like, having the best time when we were together um, earlier this year when she came down here to San Diego. And, and her and I are, like, it, it, the bad language was flying. But, I mean, I... I cuss it out. What are you going to do? It's, it's real. You're and you're emotional and you're, you're calling out somebody. You're, you're, you're talking about what you're doing and in a way that, you know, you want to evoke that emotion and the bad words just come out. Let's face it. Nobody cares. Um, so, and Tanya just said, I disagree with you, Danny. It makes you feel real and more relatable. Um, Evie said, if I get passionate, I'll drop some bombs. If you can't take it, I'm not your coach. Preach. Um, gotta find your niche. Eventually it becomes tiring living up to the fake persona. Yes, Ken, 100%. And this is kind of what I want to get into in, in terms of the topic of, of going forward in terms of trying to keep up with that fake persona. Um, and I have some examples of things I kind of want to talk about on that. Um, so Real TPS Fit, I make, or Head in the Clouds Boutiques is, is talking to Tanya saying, I make pretty paper flowers, LOL. Tattoo dork, pitbull foster doesn't go. I disagree 100%, Danny. I swear to God. There are plenty of people who are tattooed up and want flowers. And there's plenty of pretty princesses out there who want flowers. And they don't care who made them because the pretty flowers that you create are still 100% you. If I were you, I'd be putting your pretty flower products on your pit bulls and being like, look how pretty my babies are. And like, make it part of your personality. Put that beautiful content or product that you make and, but make it your own. Don't, it's great to stage it and make it look pretty and flowery, but everyone is pretty and flowery. That's not you. And it, the moment you let that go and the moment you just embrace that, hey, here's who I am, I promise you, you'll be surprised. The fact that you are that person and you're creating pretty paper flowers, they're obviously aligned because you're doing it. And I promise you that finding that balance will make a significant difference. I promise, promise, promise. Um, everyone's laughing. Um, da -da 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 -da. um, don't put us in a room with proper people. Oh, hell no, Evie. We, we'd get chased out or we'd probably chase them out. That would actually, 
that would be really funny. Um, everyone's laughing. What Jen said did that exactly. Pitbull flower power. Yes. Hashtag pitbull flower power. Um, and then Watson K said that then you tap into the dog community. Exactly. Um, there's so many ways that you can take that and, and go your personality, but still doing the things that you do. So by all means, please, please, please find that way to incorporate your personality and your brand styling. Please do, sweetie. Okay. So kind of talking about what Ken was was just alluding to and what I kind of want to talk about, about keeping up with this fake persona. I get a lot of Facebook ads for people who are selling programs and selling courses and selling coaching packages. And you guys probably get them too. I, I know I get a lot because of the types of accounts that I follow. Um, being in the industry that I'm in, I, I follow a lot of coaches and people. Um, that doesn't mean I want their coaching. It's that I interact with them. I know them. They're my peeps. Um, doesn't mean I want coaching necessarily. Not saying it's a bad thing. I have my coaches and my mentors and everything, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not out there looking for more coaching most of the time. So, um, it, I, but I get all these ads on Facebook and oh my God, you guys, and this is, this is like a mini rant of warning. Um, these ads that come out that ha they rented clothes, they went to some resort, they posed for all these photos for one day to make it look like they live this luxurious lifestyle and that they're going to make you millions of dollars when you buy their, you know, $1,200 program or whatever it is. And, you know, they're, they make it seem like it's the world's most prestigious, wonderful thing, but in all reality, they are living in a small house in the Midwest, nothing bad about this, but they're not living the lifestyle they're preaching. And it's, it drives me crazy. And not to mention, I've had this conversation more times than not. This is where the rant comes in. No offense, but if you live in a small house in the Midwest and you, quote, retired your husband, props to you. But you retired your husband making $30,000 a year. I live in Southern California. I make six figures. I ain't retiring nobody. Okay? So don't sit there and tell me how amazing your lifestyle is when your rent is less than my car payment. Okay? There's a completely different disconnect in these situations. And you're sitting here telling everybody how you're going to make them all this money and how you've done all these amazing things and everything's wonderful and how you're the guru that's going to solve their, their problems. And it's fucking bullshit. I... I can't, this, this is the rant, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I can't deal with it. And it's this fake real, it's not a fake reality, it's a fake realm that these people have created to sell a product. They want you to think you can live this luxurious lifestyle. And you know what? You absolutely can live that luxurious lifestyle. Every damn one of you can do it. But you're not going to do it from somebody who is completely faking it and just creating a beautiful ad and a beautiful, you know, photo shoot to say, buy this program. It's brand new. No one's ever done it. But oh, I did and I retired my husband. I must know everything. If you retire your husband, great. Good for you. Keep doing it. Get your coaching up. Get your clients. Build your business. Have actual tangible proof that this is something you can do and live the lifestyle. Spend your weekend at the spa. Have the nice flashy car. Do all those things every damn day and then go and tell people you can do it. I'm sorry to, you know, knock down those people who are out there trying to make a living, but you are completely lying and it becomes so obvious. If you do five minutes of research into these people who are putting out these Facebook ads, you can see how this is so not their lifestyle. Like, maybe I'm just really good at Googling and I'm really good at, like, online investigative, you know, pro uh, practices. But it doesn't take long to figure out that what they are preaching is not the reality. And so I really want you guys to think about that. If you are just starting out, just start out. Be honest that you're starting out. And this is why I love um, Tanya, the real TPS fit. She is 100% honest with her audience. She's 100% transparent with them. She's a, a, a fitness trainer and she has, uh, you know, like an ebook and she's got, you know, some online stuff that she's working on and she's working with her gym now, her local gym on some projects and things. Um, and she's doing all this this stuff, but she's like, Legit, like, you know, sometimes she's like, I struggle with my weight too. 
I struggled with eating healthy last week. I struggled with this. Like, she's open and honest. And she's not walking around as a size 2 model telling you that you can do the same damn thing. She's out there living it and doing it every damn day. And you know what? Online fitness nutritionist. My apologies. I will get it right next time, my love. (laughs) Online fitness nutritionist. But she's honest and she's real and those who are following her and those who interact with her love her for it because she is 100% true to her. She is crazy, funky, wacky, lovable. She is like, she, well, she's a lot like me. I wonder why we get along so well. Um, (laughs) But I'm just saying, she's not going to be that person who's going to sit there and and hold your hand and tell you everything's okay. She's going to be bubbly and and outgoing and and harsh and, and real and honest and she's amazing. And I love her because of that. And her audience loves her because of that. And she doesn't have a massive audience, you guys. She's not running around with 20,000 followers. She's starting out small and her audience knows that. And she's open and honest about that process. She's not trying to make a million dollars by the end of the year. We'd all love to, but she's being realistic. And I really want to use that as a case study for you guys to to think about how you're building your business. And I have to go back because I'm seeing all these comments popping in. And everyone's saying, fuck, being a size two is overrated. Ha ha ha, exactly. I love it. Um, and I love, so, so yeah, Tanya, Danny, you two talk. I, I'm so glad you said that because I literally, Danny wanted to email you and say, you need to talk to Tanya because I'm like, you two like need to get on like each other's pages. Like you guys, I really think you two could be exceptionally helpful to each other. Um, and you're, you're both in the Jen's Friends um, Facebook group. So even if you connect there and start talking on Messenger or something, you two, like I really would love to see you two support each other. I think you two would be really, really good at helping each other out. Um, and I was going to say something and now I've completely lost it. So we're going to go back and read comments. Um, um, Tanya said it's not knocking them down, it's the truth and truth. Well, I'm glad you guys see it that way. Sometimes you feel like you gotta put that disclaimer because, you know, then everyone gets all butthurt. Um, Corey is saying there's a coach that emails me bragging she made 3000 that month. And I'm like, yeah, that's about 36000 a year. No, thanks. Exactly. And you know what? If, if you're a stay at home mom and you haven't had an income, making three grand a month is huge. 100%. And I'm not knocking that. I'm 100% supporting that. If you make $1,000 a month, good for you. I'm just saying that's not enough to live on. And in some places, that is enough to live on. Most places, not so much. 3000 bucks a month they pay my bills I can tell you that much. So it's it's great do it and I'm but I'm just saying you have to be realistic when you're looking at these people who are preaching all these amazing things. Jen's trends private investigation pretty much. You guys know I'm CSI, right? Like I actually have a master's in forensic science. So this whole like investigative thing kind of comes a little bit naturally to me. I probably know some things I I don't, th- I don't think I know things that other people don't know. I think I'm just maybe more aware of, of, of research tactics because I technically actually have a master's in this. Um, I'll never decide B-size 2 I don't desire to be. And then yeah, da 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 But um, am I in there? No, girl. You're not in the Jen's Friends community, which you really should be. We need to talk about that. That's my membership program for Instagram. Um, Jen's Friends, so if you guys know, you can go to learn.jenstrends.com. So it's like my normal website, jenstrends.com. Just put learn.jenstrends.com. Um, and that has all the information on my exclusive Instagram marketing community. Um, and it's, we have a Facebook group. And there's the online course program um, with videos, tutorials, downloads. And then the Facebook group where we chat and do, you know, day-to-day discussions and share all the fun stuff in there. And Evie, you are a friend. You're just not a Jen's friend. <laughs> um, Real TPS Fit. I am extremely engaged with my audience and Jen is right. My audience is very loyal and I love them so much. You guys, seriously, and that, that's what I was going to say. When I started out doing Instagram, like you guys know me as the world's forefront blogger on Instagram marketing. When I started blogging about Instagram four years ago, you know what I told people? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to figure it out and you're along for the ride. I didn't know any of, I didn't know what I know now. I didn't know things about the API. I didn't know people who worked at companies who know people at Instagram, who could tell me things, who I can learn things from, who are giving me inside scoops on things. I didn't have any of that. I literally was like, I'm going to figure out this whole Instagram marketing thing and I'm going to bring you along for the ride through my blogs. And I just kept doing it week after week after week after week. And guess what? 
Now here I am. Within a year, I was known as a leading Instagram expert because I did it every damn week and I took my audience along for the ride. I would ask questions. Hey, have you guys noticed this? Have you seen this? What have you noticed? Have you, have you tried this? Is this working for you? Is it not working for you? So I took all my practical business applications. I took all my marketing applications and applied them to something that was completely new to me and I built myself up as an expert in the field. Now, I still rely on people. In my in Jen's Friends, we were just talking about it. I have people that DM me from around the world and we run tests. We literally test things as a group. I'm not doing it all by myself. I'm still reaching out to people and having them contribute, but they're reaching out to me now because they know that they can rely on me to provide that and to do that research. But you have to, you, you can't just show up one day and say, oh, I'm an expert on this. I don't care. I mean, if you've been doing it for 20 years, great, then you are an expert. If you're just starting on social media, but then you need to tell people you've been doing it for 20 years. You can't just literally crawl up out of the woodwork and expect everyone to give you all their money and be super successful. That's not the way the world works. Um... But I wasn't in the beginning either, Danny. It's a slow process. Be consistent. It's key. Um, Corey said, I call it Facebook forensics. Absolutely. Self-taught PI. Ken, <laughs> Ken's a pretty good PI too, but he's saying he's self-taught. Um, ask Evie saying, I'm not special. More. Sweetheart, you're always special. I love you. But we got to get you in the group. Um, okay, so Head in the Cloud said, I'll have to start all over. You don't need to start all over. You just need to start incorporating it now. You don't need to change everything you have, you guys. You don't need to go back and say, oh, well, I did this before. If you go back and like, my however many thousands of Instagram posts, they're completely different now than they were last year, than the year before that, and the year before that. You have evolved. That's totally okay. Never go back and delete stuff unless it's like obscene or something completely inappropriate that's not brand specific in that case, absolutely. But don't go back and change it. Leave it there. It shows an evolution. Again, it's the transparency. This is that appearance. You're showing people that you have evolved. You're showing people that you're a real brand and that you are changing and you're you're getting more products you're getting new experiences you're getting better photography all of these things tie into that appearance um tanya said i started my entire instagram account from scratch this past may it'll be okay if you want to restart it you can but you guys you don't have to um head in the cloud said i just changed my name to start again again um now stick with that name create your niche and be transparent people will fall in love with you Preach it, girls. God, I love you two. You two just need to, like, seriously. You two need to go talk and, and be amazing and help each other out because I love it. And feel free to do the Facebook group. Come in. If you guys want to talk in the friends group, go in there and chat and have the rest of the people chime in if you don't mind the rest of us being involved. If you want to keep it personal, start talking via Messenger um, or whatever. I, I really think you two would be super helpful for each other in a lot of ways. I think you could both help each other out. I think it'd be really, really good. Um, okay. So <laughs> we're right. I promise you, Danny, we're right. Um, Watson's saying my first year of posts are shits, um, but leaving them to show how I've grown. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's all of us. Every, no one starts out being perfect. And people that go back and delete photos trying to make everything look perfect, it's fake, which we don't want. Um, we've talked previously, you guys. I just want to check the time. Well, we got like 20 minutes. We're good. Um, we did a previous video and I went on this huge big rant that I was not able to save and I'm really pissed off that I didn't get to save that one because it was a really good video. Um, but we talked about things like grammar and, you know, that and having a, a good, you know, good captions and, and being conscious of your grammar and using the right tools and all these sorts of things. This ties into your appearances as well. Like, I used the example, and I'm not going to throw them under the bus here live, but there's a local news station that I follow on Facebook and literally every single post has a typo. Like, if it doesn't have a typo, it's shocking. They miss a word. They forget punctuation. Their, their things are misspelled. It doesn't read like a complete sentence. It's either like a, a partial sentence, run on sentence, whatever it is. I do not know who is writing their captions, but my God, it is horrible. It drives me crazy. I still follow them because they, they're one of the better local media about posting regularly about actual real news. And I, I never have time to watch TV and I haven't turned on the news. So if it doesn't come on Facebook, I probably won't hear about it. So I keep following them, but it drives me crazy. Like it's horrible and it's so frustrating. I'm like, can you just hire somebody who can speak English? And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean like who can actually make a sentence <laughs> because it's really that bad. But that plays into their branding, you guys. It makes you look bad. That's part of your appearance. Yeah, I have a typo here and there. Yeah, you, you missed something, but guess what? 
It is this little wonderful thing on pretty much every social media site except for Twitter where you can go back and edit. So even if you did happen to hit post and then you went back 30 seconds later and read it and were like, oh, I totally left out a word or, oh, I misspelled that, then go back and edit it and fix it. Don't leave it there. It is horrible. No, I am not naming them. <laughs> um, but Ken's calling out his. Um... So, Evie was saying, my grammar sucks, I blame the German in me. But the thing is, Evie, is that even if your grammar sucks, it still reads properly. And if it doesn't, here's the thing. At the moment someone talks to you, they know that that's you. And it, it becomes part of your branding. Not in a bad way. It's almost kind of supportive of you because when they get to know you, they realize that that's how you talk. But yours isn't bad. Yours, yours is actually, like, I'm talking about, like, being blatantly bad. Um... Real TPS Fit said, my blog posts now are completely different than they were a year ago, and evolving is a good thing. Um, all of you are laughing at me. Verified Beth said, have someone else check your stuff if you're not confident in your grammar skills. Absolutely. Have someone at the, you know, the desk over from you. Have someone else who's, you know, a friend of yours that you can call on. Use Editor. You guys know I always promote Editor, E-D-I-T-O-R-R. -R. Um, editor with two R's in the end. It's an amazing app. It's, it's real people editing your content, so if you're really worried about it, and you can do that. Um, Watson K said, ABC 13 Houston are always getting pulled over by the grammar police. That's hilarious. Um, I can say mine is not an ABC affiliate, but, um, yeah, it's the exact same thing. Um, Grammarly is a good, ex um, alternative, but the thing with Grammarly, you guys, is that Grammarly is actually done by a robot. Grammarly is done by a machine. And it actually misses a lot of content. Um, that's why I use Editor, because Editor is actually done by real people. And you can get your stuff back in a matter of minutes. Like, depending on how long your content is, if you have something short, like whether it's a paragraph or, or that kind of thing, like a caption, a short blog post, and that kind of stuff, you can literally have it picked up and have it back to you within, like, five to ten minutes, completely edited. So there isn't any time delay. And that could be at two o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon. So Editor is definitely my preferred recommendation over Grammarly because it's a real human being that's putting the time into it. Um, um, I hope I'm not, yeah, like I said, Evie, you're not that bad. Um, hey, Francisco's in the house. Hey, um, he said, my life is a typo. <laughs> my goodness, stop. Um, Real TPS Fit said, um, what's up with not editing? Editor as well. Um, and Ken knows. Ken's uh, friends with, uh, with Brian and Heather who run Editor as well. Um, life is what you make it though, F Marketing Mix. Um, okay. So we are all caught up on the comments, and then Ken just threw in, so end of every news post by my news station now, or how, Ken, I think you just made <laughs> your own grammar police on your comment. End of every news post by my news station, how link to click to report grammar and spelling errors, sad. I'm going to try to make that sound like English, because I, I think you missed some grammar. I'm totally just giving you a hard time. Okay, so, um, with, you know, and this, that's the thing. All of this does tie into the appearances, you guys. It's really important that you have this strong cohesion of all your content. Like I said, whether it's videos, whether it's photos, whether it's links and articles, um, typing and cooking dinner, sure, good excuse. Um, no, totally get it. It's all good. Um, so here's another thing that I want to point out um, before I wrap it up with my final analogy. Um, but... When you rush your content, that is not good either. I really want you to think about all of these things that we talked about, about these impressions, about making people, you know, understand you and relate to you. And, and there's all these like overly fake, like they put too much time and energy into it. Yeah, we don't want to go that far where everything looks fake. But if you turn around, you're like, oh crap, it's six o'clock on Friday and I need to post something. Snap a photo, write something up and post it. And it's irrelevant and it's random and the photo's not that good. That is not helping you either. We really want you to be creating content with strategy in mind. We really want you to be focusing on creating that quality content, whatever that is. We, like today's blog post said, it's not about being the Stepford wife and looking like everybody else, but creating your best content. And to do that, you need to take time. When you rush that content out, it makes you look bad. It makes you look like you don't care. It makes you look, you know, confused, discombobulated, all this sort of stuff that does not bode well for your brand. So don't rush your content. Have a strategy. Have a content calendar. Know what you're posting every day. If you don't, don't post. If you have nothing to say, if you guys have noticed, partially because I've just been crazy busy, but in the last like month, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it's been, I've barely posted on Instagram. Like I'm posting like maybe once or twice a week because I don't have anything else to say. 
I do, but I really don't. And I'm not going to rush content. I'm busy. I've got a lot of things going on. I've got a lot of deadlines. I'm working on that dummies book. Um, my co-author, uh, co um, Corey, is, is here tonight, and so we're doing that Instagram for Business for Dummies. And, like, the last like the last of the chapters are due on Monday, and I still have one more chapter I'm trying to wrap up. Like, I've got, like, my own shit going on, and I just don't have time to be like, I'm going to post something random to Instagram that's completely irrelevant. So if you don't have something to post, don't post. Rushing to push content out that is not quality content, that's just going to get po content out there that it's going to diminish your brand relevance. It's going to diminish your quality. It's going to diminish your reach because when you start posting crappy content, people stop reading it. They stop engaging with it and then algorithms punish you. So you don't want to just push stuff out there for the sake of doing it. Don't rush. Take your time. Take a deep breath. Go, you know what? I'm going to skip today's post. I'll make it up tomorrow and we'll get back on track. That's totally okay, you guys. This all ties in to the entire concept of your appearance and how you are perceived online. Um, Tanya's saying, I, saying me, she goes, you rarely post and I race to read everything you do post. But again, see, that's the thing. Because people know when I put something out, it's going to be a value. When I post it, they're more likely to engage. They're more likely to want to interact with it because they know it's not just going to be another random nothingness. Although, I think if I even posted random nothingness, I think Tanya would still be the first person there reading it because she loves me. Um... Uh, da 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 da. Did Corey say, yeah, tell me about it. Like, we're like down to the wire, you guys, to get the, the last of this book done. And, like, I'm like, oh my god, tomorrow, I'm gonna get home from work tomorrow. And it's like, it's finishing this last chapter. Like, I'm literally sitting down tomorrow to do this last chapter. I'm, I'm not even gonna touch it tonight because I'll just get started and drive myself crazy. So, I'm like, nope, I took a break. I, I got where I got. I'm gonna go finish it tomorrow night and just them carving out my whole night tomorrow night to finish this book. Um,. And Ken saying, yeah, my posting to Instagram was dropped last month because of Harvey. Yeah, that's a good reason. Um, Ken lives in Houston. So obviously they've had um, Mother Nature up the, the ace um, and dealing with all of that and, and, and recovering from everything. So he's kind of been a little preoccupied. Um, and he, girl, you're getting yourself a signed copy. I'm going to have lots of signed copies. And I, I, those of you who, who want them are getting them for sure. Um, <laughs> Francisco at F Marketing makes the same call and sit cough cough. Um, I would try that, but unfortunately my boss knows everything I have going on right now, so I can't really pull a sick day. Not to mention, October 9th is Columbus Day. Woohoo! I get a day off! It's coming! Two weeks away, I get a day off! But by then all these deadlines will be done, right? Um... And yes, yes, you guys are, you guys are getting your signed copies, I promise you. And it is, you guys, this is like, it's a legit book. Like, I don't know how many pages it's going to be. It's like a couple hundred pages, though. Like, this is a legit book. Like, it's, we've put some serious time between uh, myself, Corey, and Eric. It's, it's legit. I'm excited to get it published. So hopefully by the end of the year, it'll be out. Um, that's, the, we're hoping that, you know, for all those, all those Christmas lists, we're hoping that you guys will, will be able to get them. Okay. So, um, what, signed copies, um, Seeking Surnames is asking what sign copies of um, my book. So um, my co-author, Corey, is here. I'm doing Instagram for Business for Dummies. It's a for dummies book. Um, and it's literally everything about Instagram from start to finish. Um, and it's, it's a lot, a lot of information. We've been going through and editing and revising and doing a million things. So um, that's, that's what we're talking about sign copies of. Um, okay, so before we wrap it up, we have less than 10 minutes before, and then, then, then the two minutes are going to happen, Ken. We're going to get to the two minute mark. Um, for those of you who tuned in late, Ken was talking on Chatgram, uh, over on Twitter this week about, um, how long live videos should be. And they were talking about how my videos always go to the full hour. And he made a comment that the last two minutes are always the best part because I realize I'm in the last two minutes of a timer and I'm like, oh my God, I gotta go to it. And I start talking like a crazy person trying to wrap everything up and it's, it's gotten comical. It's part of my branding now, right, you guys? Okay, so I wanted to make um, kind of an analogy for you guys when we're talking about all of this. Everything we talked about tonight is about appearances and, and why they matter on social media and how you can, you know, create your branding and all this sort of stuff. I want to use the analogy of online dating because I think even if you're not single and even if you've never done online dating, I think you can understand this analogy. And people go on these online dating profiles and, you know, they have maybe overly perfect photos photoshopped and then you meet them in real life and they look nothing like their photos uh, Ken's playing the music oh my god you still have to do that when I read the, the countdown I'm like I need to like I need to seriously I'm gonna have to find something where I can like play the music <laughs> we were joking about like the Emmys music where like they like just start playing the music over you so you can't talk anymore um 
So yeah, that'll be, I need to have something to like, I'll just like play the music and it just like do the countdown for me. Um, but when it comes to, you know, that online dating world, some people go over the top, right? Like they've got like the, the overly, you know, photoshopped, you know, picture, but it's nothing like what they look like in real life. Or you get the person who shows up and they like took a random photo in a bathroom and like they totally don't care. And it's like, you know, who wants to connect with that? Like if you couldn't put five seconds into actually taking a good photo, who's ever going to want to connect with you in the online dating world? <laughs> Tanya is saying, any good dates lately? Honey, we, we're, we're talking offline. <laughs> we're not talking here. Um, we're, not, we're not, that part of my personal life, which, oh, Ken, tying into that story, um, my personal life in that context will not be, dis <laughs> be described here in any live videos. I can promise you that. Um, but yeah, you have to think about that whole concept. Like imagine that your business profiles are your online dating profile. You want it to be professional and a beautiful photo of you or a handsome photo of you or a great logo photo of you, but you want it to look like you. You want to make sure that the photo is a good quality photo, not something that makes you look poor in, in a bad light, not poor, ri like rich poor, but you don't want it to look poor either. Um, but, and you don't want to turn around and be like, oh, I'm this, 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 and this, and you list all these amazing things you do, but really you've never done any of them. You really want, it's like a resume. All of your online your social media, whether even down to your website, your blog, that sort of thing, but all of your social media is your resume. If someone wants to work with you, whether you're a coach, a consultant, whether you sell products, whether you're, you know, more enterprise related, whether you're a restaurant or a florist, it doesn't matter what you do. Your online medium is your business card. It's your resume. It is how people get to know you. And this is why appearances are so important. You really want to have that good professional look. You want to have something people can relate to. Have that personality. When you turn around, I'm looking at these comments, you guys, and I'm dying. Like, I'm trying to keep a straight face so I can get to, like, my two-minute warning. But literally, you guys are killing me with the no dick pics, please. <laughs> and all of this. You guys, I love you. And the bathroom selfies with the toothpaste splatter all over the mirror. Oh, my God. I love you guys. Oh, like, can we just, like, stay on for, like, another hour? I got nothing. Actually. Actually, that's not sure my daughter's showing up because I have to take her out to the doctor in the morning. So I actually have her tonight. So dang it, I can't stay on another hour. I should just come back and we should just keep doing it. One of these days I will. Um, but you really, you have to think about everything you're putting out online is how it represents your business. When it comes to your website, you put all this time and money and energy into a great, you know, website, but then you, you know, don't carry that through your social media or you go out and you spend all this money on marketing, whether it's, you know, print materials, whether it's advertising, it could be radio ads, it's your business cards, it's all of that stuff. And then you turn around and you're like, you, again, on social media, you do something completely different. You don't care. And they all have to align. It's all part of that first impression. This is why all of this is so important. With that being said, we're going to stop talking about why appearances matter because you guys are killing me. I love you guys. Um, Evie saying she did, uh, she was doing the online dating thing. So she's got a collection. Um, I, I can only imagine. And if we could do a whole separate, maybe I should do it like an Instagram live on my other account. So if you guys don't know, and I, I'm not posting there regularly right now, because again, I've just been too busy, but go to, um, at high heels every day, um, at high heels every day. That's my other Instagram account where I talk about all my random musings, um, as a single mom. <laughs> so if you want to go over there, that's, that's a little bit more of this kind of conversation. So maybe, maybe we'll do, a, a an Instagram live over in that world. Um, and, and talk about the, the joys of single momdom and, and singlehood and, and all the, the fun things like that. Oh my god, I love you guys. You guys are so funny. Um, TPS Fit is saying it's the best IG live ever. I'm, gl I'm glad you guys thought this was the best one ever. I, I love you guys. You guys are so much fun. So um, I think we have like four minutes left. Um, so <laughs> Mike is, is, is giving the eyeballs. Um, so we're going to wrap it up. We're not going to get to the, the, the music cue. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I, I think I'll beat the music cue tonight. But thank you for tuning in. Uh, as we talked about at the top of the, the hour, um, reminder to go check out today's blog post. If you go to jenstrans.com, today's blog post was how pretty, how pretty does your Instagram account really need to be? Um, and that was a lot of the content related to tonight's call as well. So I hope that um, that will, you know, kind of 
help give you another perspective on all the things we talked about, about the Stepford Wives uh, Instagram accounts, that type of effect. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, oh, Shannon um, was here too. Good to see you. Um, come back and watch the replay if you want to watch all the, the craziness. Um, and TPS Fan, always fun and informative. I love you, girl. I'm glad you guys found it informative. Danny, I'm so glad you were able to stay and watch the whole thing and you didn't have to bail out in the middle of, uh, of cheerleading practice. So I'm so glad you got to stay and be involved. I love you guys. You are all the best. Um, just so you know, in two weeks, it will not be on Wednesday. It's going to be on Tuesday. Um, I have super secret things going on. I can't tell you about it. Um, but I will in the future when things come to fruition. But it's going to be pretty freaking amazing. Um, I'm, I really don't even have any details. Like, I'm, I'm excited. I don't even have details on what this thing is. Um, but I have a really important meeting in two weeks on a Wednesday. So I'm going to move that live video to the Tuesday. I will send out the reminders. I will make sure everybody knows. Yes, reminders will be plentiful. Um, uh, AZ um, Schultz. Um, so I'm at a miss. It's okay. The replay will live on. The replay will be here for you. So you can come back when you've got time to sit down and watch the whole hour. Um, it'll be amazing. So thank you guys. We will see you in two weeks on a Tuesday. Reminders will go out about everything. I have no idea what that topic's going to be. I never do until the last minute because we got to make it fun and relevant and trendy. So we'll figure it out in two weeks. Thank you for being here. I love you all. I love all the comments. I will see you guys in two weeks. All right. Bye.